How is everybody in the Zoom room? If you are in the Zoom room and you would like to ask any questions or chat, please set your chat to all panelists and attendees. I am your Fast Track instructor. My name is Kim Danke, and tonight we are going to be doing some simple food combining using a website that I will give you a little bit later in the group. And hello, I'm not sure who Galaxy J7 Sky Pro is, but how are you? I hope you're doing well. If you are in the chat, make sure you set the chat to all panelists and attendees. And I give everybody until 8.03 to get on here. And guess what? It's 8.03. So if you don't mind, just tell me who you are, where you're from, and if you are here for new or if you're here for a refresh, okay? So we're going to go ahead and we're going to get started. And I'm going to share my screen with you. My screen should look like um, it should have a, a, a finish line flag on it. It should say fast track on it. Shibboleth new member at the top. Please tell me if you can see that. Hey, Robin. Awesome. Tom from Huntsville. Okay, thank you. Brand new. Okay. So hopefully y'all were on last night. Please forgive me if I don't remember names from last night because I do talk to so many people in a day that sometimes I can forget. If you did not watch last night's um, program overview, please make sure that you go back and you do that because it's very, very helpful to do that. Uh, hello, Becky from Lake City, new, awesome. Okay, so I've got some new folks on here. That is fantastic, very, very good. Well, what we're gonna do tonight is we're gonna talk about some simple food combining because um, Leticia, Hello from Ball Ground, Georgia. Awesome, welcome. We're glad that you are here doing a restart. So what we're gonna do tonight, because last night I went over the whole program overview. So I'm not gonna do that again tonight. And also, if you watch all of the 14 little Fast Track videos, you're gonna get it too. That takes less than one hour to watch all of those Fast Track videos. And then you can go ahead and take that test and earn your badge. Hopefully, if you haven't done that already, you can do that by the end of Saturday or in the end of Saturday. I have set it up in a way that you would be able to achieve that by Saturday if you do all the posts that go out in the new member fast track group on Facebook if you were in Facebook. If you're in Facebook and you're not in the new member fast track group, just search for Chaboleth new member fast track and I will let you into that group. So the way that this is going to work tonight is I am going to read out loud the foods that are in the categories as we come upon a new category. Okay, but we've listed the same exact foods in all the categories, so I'm not gonna reread those every single time. I'm just going to read the new ones that we come upon. Because part of you learning how to do this program is familiarizing yourself with what items are considered a category one lean protein and considered a category two fibrous carb and so forth. So we're gonna read through those so that you can start hearing them. But the best way for you to find out what you're gonna eat is to make a list of the foods that you're already eating. Look them up in the food library and see what category they are. Then based on the combination chart, you'll know, okay, I like to eat lima beans. I'm gonna have to pair them with a lean protein and a fibrous carb because see lima beans are an energy carb. And then you would say, what's a lean protein that I like? or what's a fibrous carb that I like, and what three things do I think would taste good together. So you just put those together as a meal, okay? So you gotta do that little pre-work for yourself. That's really good because on this program, on this lifestyle, we're not required to eat anything we don't like to eat. I like that. So let's have a look right here at category one, lean protein. If you'll notice that it says that you can eat two to eight ounces. Uh, two to eight ounces. Now, I don't usually measure anything. I just use the two hand rule. I take my two hands, I put them together as close as possible, just like that, and you lay them down over your food. And you don't want it to be thicker than the thickest part of your hand, but lay that down over your food. If you can't see your food, your portion control. So I really haven't done many 
uh, measuring or weighing or anything like that. But if you are the type of person who likes to know, then you could do two to eight ounces. Really two to six is for a lady. You might could go up to eight for um, a man. But I had a guy in class tonight over at the Cartersville store that said eight ounces is a lot. It's amazing how much that is. So he's glad that he's figured that out for himself and he doesn't do that much. So just to let you know, you could do two to eight ounces uh, if you needed to. So let's read through some of these. Egg whites, all of your fish, chicken breast, turkey breast, pork tenderloin, boar's head turkey, boar's head chicken breast, boar's head London broil, low fat cottage cheese, fat free cottage cheese, Greek plain yogurt, 97% lean ground beef, and 96% lean ground meat. So all of those are just some simple basic category one lean proteins that you could use. Now, if you watched the video last night, you did find out that I said that you could eat a lean protein by itself. You're still not wanting to do more than like that, okay? You're just choosing to not have a side, basically. So you really just wanna still keep up that amount right there. But you can cook it up in one of our approved oils, MCT oil, the 100% MCT oil, CT oil is the absolute best, and that's our number one recommended. But you could also use coconut oil, which is 60% MCTs. You could use ghee butter, a hemp oil. You could use zero calorie cooking spray, and you could use any fat free bouillon or anything like that that you might want to cook it up in. But typically, your cooking oil or fat, the measurement that you would want to use is one tablespoon per serving. So let's say that you're cooking yourself one piece of chicken, you could use one tablespoon of MCT. If you're cooking chicken breasts for the family and you cook four, then you could use four tablespoons of MCT. But if you're doing egg whites, I wouldn't use all that much. That one tablespoon even might drown your egg whites. So just uh, do as much as you need in that. You'll have to play around with that. But then you can add some condiments. Now condiments, we have a condiment rule and we're gonna go over that after I read this list, okay? We've got zero calorie cooking spray. I mean, not cooking spray, zero calorie condiments, 15 calorie or less spices and seasonings, salt and pepper, 15 calorie or less coffee creamers, salsa, salsa, reduced sugar ketchup, mustard, hot sauce, craft, fat free mayo. Now, that is just a small, small list. And I want you to know that there is a much bigger list in the food library. But if something does not have to be in the food library for you to use it as a condiment, as long as it follows this rule. We call it the five, two, and few rule. So if you picked up something in the grocery store, you looked it up in, your, in the food library, in the condiments section, but you did not see it. If it follows the following rule, you could still use it, even though it's not in the food library. It needs to have, five grams of sugar or less per serving, two grams of fat or less per serving. And you're not gonna use more than 50 calories total of condiments in, your, in that meal. So five grams of sugar or less, and there's the way to remember that is, sugar has five letters in it. And then look for two grams of fat or less per serving. And as long as your condiments, even if you're using multiple condiments, they would all need to follow the rule, the five and two rule, and then you wouldn't use more than 50 calories worth of condiments in a meal. So you can use condiments on here and doctor up your lean protein in the cooking oil. And there is a flame behind this plus sign. What that means is that is excellent for fat burning. Absolutely excellent for fat burning. So one of the things I want you to know about condiments is I personally would be very, very choosy with my condiments. And because after you, if you used 50 calories of condiments for 21 meals in a week, that is 1,050 random calories that you may not need. So I found out that I didn't need a slice of cheese on everything because I couldn't even taste a slice of cheese on a lot of things and I was just used to putting it on there. So that eliminates a little bit of calories if I don't put a slice of cheese on there. Maybe I use something that has a little bit more flavor on it. So this right here would be excellent for fat burning. And then if you have a look uh, down below, we are just showing you right here, you could eat a category seven by itself if you wanted to. If this is shellfish, 
You can have two to eight ounces, the exact same right up here is the lean protein, because honestly, shellfish is really just a lean protein. It's really just a category one, but the reason it's not in the category one is due to the fact that for biblical reasons and medical reasons, some people don't eat shellfish. And so we have it pulled off on its own category. I don't eat shellfish. So I don't, when I look at the um, combination chart, I just ignore anything with the category seven in it. I don't need to concern myself with those. So that's why they have been pulled off of there. But let's read some examples. Crab, lobster, shrimp, scallops, oysters, mussels, and clams. And like I said, those are just a, a small sampling, but that gives you an idea of what is in the shellfish category. I'm not gonna reread these cooking oils because I've already read them. and I'm not gonna reread the condiments because I've already read them. But what you can do for an excellent fat burning meal is take some shellfish, cook it up in one of these oils right here and throw on some condiments and have an excellent fat burning meal. Let's scroll up a little bit more. So the thing that is new right here in this row is this column, the hemp heart column, okay? Or the hemp products. So you could do hemp hearts, hemp flakes, very sweet hemp flakes, hemp protein powder, and hemp oil. You could do all of those hemp products with a lean protein, use the right oil, and doctor it up with some condiments, and you have an excellent fat burning meal. I want you to keep in mind that there's a couple of differences here. Hemp hearts are a category six. They are a super food. Something qualifies to be a superfood if it has all the macronutrients in there. If it's got water in it, if it's got protein in it, carbs and fat. So a superfood has all four of those items in it. So hemp hearts are a superfood. But let's look right here at these hemp flakes. Hemp flakes are a category one and two. They are considered a lean protein and a fibrous carb at the same time. So, but you can use any of these with a lean protein, cook it up in the right oil and throw on some condiments and have an excellent fat burning meal. So we're gonna scroll down again. This row right here, the only thing that changes here was the category seven. So they're just saying that you could put your category seven with your hemp products, cook it up in the right oil with some condiments and have an excellent fat burning meal. So let's scroll down again. The new thing here is this. This is our category two fibrous carbs. So let's read over some of those. Broccoli, asparagus, squash, okra, green leafy vegetables, spinach, cabbage, cucumbers, bell peppers, hot peppers, cauliflower, kraut, and dill pickles. So you can have half a cup up to one cup. Half a cup is probably better for weight loss. When you get into maintenance, you could possibly do up to one cup, okay? Now, keep in mind that any of these things here that are raw, they haven't been cooked, are also considered freebies. And so a lot of times people think, oh, I should just be able to eat as many of those as I want to. And you, you can, but you've got to be reasonable about it. We are trying to uh, teach ourselves, one, not to overeat to the point where our stomach is feeling full. We should feel satisfied, but we shouldn't feel extremely full. So just filling our belly up with fibrous carbs can also make us feel over full, and it can also stretch our stomach out, which we're trying to shrink our stomach, not stretch it out. So I would stick to that amount. And then if you really did not feel satisfied, you could go back and have a little bit more, but just do what it, I would also call that a freebie too, by the way, in your journal, but I would not do it to the point where I'm feeling full. You want to get used to not having that full feeling or needing to feel that full feeling anymore. Okay. So let's scroll up a little bit more. This is just showing you that you could put a category seven shellfish with any of these category two fibrous carbs, cook it up in the right oil with the right condiments. And you, this would be an excellent fat burning meal. In fact, Travis says that your category one lean protein, which is also a category seven, because it's just a lean protein. So I'm just gonna make it easy and say category one plus two. Category one plus two or category seven plus two, Cooked in MCT oil is your fastest 
fat burning deal. MCT is thermogenic. It has a little bit of a heating up effect and it does help burn extra calories. So we're gonna scroll down just a little bit more and you will see some superfoods listed. And remember what I said about a superfood. How does something qualify to be a superfood? It has all the macronutrients in there. So pinto beans, black beans, red beans, soybeans, peanut butter, nuts, and seeds. All of those things are just a small, small list of the things that are superfoods. Now, one of the things that I usually tell people is your light colored beans are energy carbs. But guess what I needed to do? I needed to adjust that. So now what I say, most of your lighter colored beans are energy carbs, not all of them, because your garbanzo beans and your northern beans, those are superfoods. So there's going to be those few that you're going to want to make sure that you know what they are. So if you know that the lighter colored beans, most of them are in energy carb, but some of them are in superfood. If you like to eat those, you need to look those up and know where they fall so that you can properly combine them. Okay. And this is just showing you that you could uh, put some condiments on those superfoods and you will have a great fat burning meal. You'll notice how I went from excellent fat burning to great fat burning. It's still good for weight loss, just not quite as good as this one right here. And the reason being is that it does have all of the macronutrients in there. So it's got a little bit more of your energy carb in there, or carbs in there. So let's scroll a little bit more. You've got your category six can be eaten with a category two. So we've already read all of this right now. So basically what this is saying is if you wanted to put some, uh, have some pinto beans and maybe some spinach or some green leafy vegetables. So you can have your beans and your greens. Um, you can have, I'm trying to think of what other else you might do. Um, I might do some black beans with some hot peppers. You could do that. That would be a category six and a two. Throw on your condiments and you have, an, you have a great fat burning meal, a great fat burning meal. Now, in just a minute, we're gonna get to some breads. We have over 60 approved breads that are in the category two column. What's great about that is you can make yourself a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Your peanut butter would be your superfood. Make sure you buy the right one. Make sure you look it up in the food library. There are some that are better for you than others. You could use a category two fibrous carb bread. It's not listed right here because bread, less is best on the bread still. So we're gonna introduce that in a minute. So we just wanted you to get the idea that fibrous carbs that aren't bread are best. But you could do that. Put your, uh, use your jelly or your sugar-free jelly as your condiment using less than 50 calories and you have a great fat burning peanut butter and jelly. Losing weight, eating peanut butter and jelly. Whoever knew you could do that? But you can by using the right products, using the right products. So we're gonna scroll down again and look, we've got a new column right here. Category four, protein plus fat. And if you'll notice the other proteins, the lean proteins said that you could have two to eight ounces. You'll notice here, this is two to six ounces. The reason that is, is because there's four calories in one gram of lean protein, but there are nine, nine calories in one gram of fat. Therefore, we have to just lower the amount that we eat on this one to keep um, calories in check. So you would eat two to six ounces for a protein plus fat. Let's read over some of these. We got our whole eggs, steak, pork ribs, beef ribs, turkey spam, pulled pork, beef brisket, 93% lean up to 95.9% .9 lean ground meat, and turkey kielbasa as long as 50% or more of the calories are not coming from fat. Or you have 50% calories from fat or less. I think I said it either way would be correct. So you can just look at the nutrition label on there and see how many calories are coming from fat. And if it's 50% or more, you don't want to buy that one. So you can put a category four with a category two, doctor it up with your condiments, and you have a great fat burning meal. Now I'm gonna stop right here and tell you what you do not want to eat with a category four protein plus fat. You do not wanna eat your energy carbs, your fruit, or your superfoods with a category four protein plus fat. Now, with that being said, 
You can eat a four by itself if you needed to. I always say in a pinch because optimally it'd be paired with a category two. Now you still don't want to go over your ounces though if you're eating that protein plus fat by itself. It's just that you're choosing to have less food, but it is something that you could do. But what you, you can also eat your category four protein plus fat. You can eat it with some chicken and or shellfish. And what you were choosing to do though is you're choosing to maybe put some uh, steak or something there and some chicken there or steak there and, and uh, shrimp there. You're still not gonna have more than this half of your hand with lean protein because the rest of this part needs to be some fibrous carbs, okay? And you still need to be able to cover it up. But you can eat your protein plus fat with a category one, category two, and category seven. You just don't wanna eat it with a category three, five, or six. Now, let me go over why real quick. You do not wanna pair a protein plus fat with a energy carb or a fruit because those, or superfood, because those things bring a little bit more of an insulin release and the other things that you can eat it with and the fat in there will get stored because anytime an insulin release comes out, you are bringing out the fat bus. The fat bus is a real thing. It's a hormone. It's called insulin. It's a growth hormone. The specific type of growth hormone that it is, it's a fat storage hormone. So we just don't combine a protein plus fat with something that's going to bring insulin so that we don't store that fat. Having this delicious steak or some great whole eggs or anything on that list, having those things, just because it's got the word fat in it doesn't mean that it's a bad thing. Fat is good for our brain. We need good fats. There's nothing wrong with eating that. Where the problem comes in is when it got paired with, let's say, French fries or a potato. So if it got paired with that, those things are going to bring in a large insulin release, especially depending on how much you've ate of it. And then it's going to go around because its job, its job is to go around and collect fat and store it. When you have an insulin release, all efficient fat burning stops for up to two days and it increases your appetite for that same time frame as well. That's why after a holiday, it takes us two perfect days eating according to the shibboleth shield, doing everything according to the shield to get back into efficient fat burning. But this is a life of balance. So after we've had a holiday, which guess what? Planned or unplanned, a holiday is coming. So we just have to know, no big deal, we had a holiday. I hope that you schedule your holidays out when you've got important things going on that do need celebrating. And I hope that you truly enjoy them. But on those regular days, those every other days that we're living, we don't need to treat every day like it's a holiday. We need to be eating properly. So you just get right back to your uh, perfect days after a holiday. So you can have a category four with a category two. You just don't want to eat it with anything that's going to bring more of an insulin release. And that's for sure your energy carbs and your fruit and a little bit on your superfood. Because remember, the superfood has all the macronutrients in there, including some carbs. So let's scroll up a little bit more. And the new category here or the new column we've got is your category three energy carb, your category three energy carb. We're gonna read over some things that are in that list. All of your potatoes are in this list. Oatmeal, steel cut oats, weight control oatmeal, which I think is now called protein and fiber oatmeal from Quaker. Long grain brown rice, quinoa, lima beans, peas, all of your peas, tomato, onion, carrots, hooked carrots. Raw carrots are actually a category two, um, or well, they can be eaten as a freebie if they're raw, but if they're cooked, you have to consider them a category three. And then a whole wheat pasta, whole grain pasta. So those would all be considered a category three. Now, if you'll notice right here, it gives you a range of the amount that you can have. If you are in weight loss mode, I suggest that you don't have more than a quarter cup. If you are in maintenance, you could go up to half of a cup, okay? So about a quarter of a cup. Now, if you want to eat, let's just say lima beans. You want to eat some lima beans and that's okay. You're gonna get about a quarter cup of lima beans, but you must pair it with a category one and a category two. That is a must and an and. It must be paired with those two things. So let's talk about what's happening here. You're gonna have some, let's just say lima beans. You're gonna have some lima beans, an insulin release is going to come. 
But guess what? You didn't overeat your lima beans. The insulin release wasn't massively huge. It is, you had about a quarter of a cup. So, but insulin is coming. And no matter what the size of that um, insulin release, you still have to consider that it takes two days to get all that back out of your, your body. It could dissipate a little bit faster and it is easier to recover when you just have a hollow meal. I went off on a tangent there. Been a whole full out hog trough day, but still you've got to consider that the size of the what you eat is makes a difference in the insulin that you are uh, producing. So we're gonna have a smaller amount of this insulin producing item, just a quarter cup. But then let's say that you have those lima beans with uh, some turkey breast, and then you had some green beans with it. That right there is great for fat burning. The reason that it's great for fat burning is because you paired it properly and it is probably different than what you were doing before. You maybe not have were pairing the food properly before. So what's happening in this situation is you're allowing the protein in the lean protein and the fiber in the fibrous carb to neutralize the insulin the release that is coming from this energy carb. So you're basically letting food be your medicine and taking care of this insulin for you by choosing to eat that in a properly combined meal. Isn't that smart? That's awesome, I love that. So we're gonna scroll down a little bit more and then the category that changed here, this column is category five, fruit. All of your fruit is in this category. Here's the thing about fruit. Fruit is actually really, really good for you. It's an antioxidant carb. We need those antioxidants because antioxidants pick up free radicals and free radicals are damaging to our cells. But fruit must be treated differently when we are in weight loss. Okay, let me go back up here. This category three energy carb, you must at all times have it with a category one and a category two, even when you get to maintenance. But this category five fruit, it must be paired properly when you are in weight loss. When you get to maintenance, you can have one serving of fruit as a snack in a day if you'd want to without pairing it, okay? But that's once you get to maintenance. When weight loss, you've got a goal that you're trying to achieve. So we just have to treat a few things differently in that time, and this is fruit for sure. So let's read this. Berries, apples, oranges, grapefruit, plums, grapes, bananas, peaches, pineapple, and kiwi. Now, it's not that these got put in order just like this perfectly, but I wanna tell you, the berries, apples, oranges, and grapefruit are your best they have the lowest glycemic um, impact on your body. So if you're gonna do some fruit, these top four, any berries and then apples, oranges, grapefruit, berries are always best and then those three, they happen to be in order of best. These other didn't all end up like that. So that was unplanned I think, but it just happened. So I wanted to tell you that. So category five, fruit. So let's say that you want to eat some fruit. You could do, I, I need to add this on there, you could do half a cup, half a cup of fruit in weight loss. It could go up to a cup in maintenance, but you must pair it with a category one lean protein and a category two fibrous carb. So let's say that you want some berries, have your half a cup of berries, but maybe you make yourself an egg white spinach omelet. Maybe you do that. The egg whites are the lean protein, the spinach is the fibrous carb, and you can have your berries. It will neutralize the uh, insulin effect from the berries. Keep in mind too, that fruit can be used as a condiment. You just don't wanna use more than 50 calories of it, but fruit can be used as a condiment. So if you're just wanting to toss a couple of berries in, like a little bitty palm full of berries into your uh, yogurt or something like that, you can do that, you can do that. So a category one and a category two and a category five is a properly combined meal. So now we're gonna get right down here to things that, see the thing about this program that makes it so sustainable is that it is allowing us to eat even the things that aren't necessarily whole foods, things that are maybe in the center aisles of the grocery store, things that are in the freezer section. So we just teach you what is the best of those things and then you need to make sure that you're eating them in the right way. So let's just go over some other things. 
So remember I went over that we have some breads in the category two column or category. There are over 60 approved bread or bread type items in category two. This is a hallelujah moment, I'm telling you, because most people don't wanna give up bread for the rest of their life, they don't. So if, you're, if you do, it's best, but if you don't, we'll tell you how to use it and which ones to use, and that is a blessing. Okay, so let's read over some of these. La Tortilla Factory 50 Calorie Tortilla, Olay Extreme Wellness High Fiber Tortilla, Healthy Life Bread, Nature's Own Double Fiber Wheat Bread, Brand Crisp Bread, Healthy Life Hot Dog Buns, Thomas Light Buns. I, I mean, English Muffins, it's the 100 calorie English Muffins. So I really enjoy the Olay Extreme Wellness High Fiber Tortilla. I also like the Sara Lee 45 calorie delightful multigrain bread. That's really good. And then uh, I've bought the Thomas Light 100 calorie English muffins before and they're really good, but I found out I don't need the whole English muffin. I usually just do one side of it and do a little open face egg sandwich and it's delicious. So let's have a look here at some approved sweeteners. You could do stevia, Splenda, monk fruit, xylitol. Actually out of these, my favorite is xylitol. And then I did buy some monk fruit um, syrup for my pancakes, approved pancakes. And isn't that fun to say that you are eating properly, but you can eat pancakes? It just needs to be the one of the pancake recipes from the recipe library. Splenda, I'm gonna go ahead and talk about this right now. You know, that's an artificial sweetener and some people just think, oh, you should not have artificial sweeteners. If you are that person, then just don't have them. It's totally fine. But what I love about this program is we take every single person where they are on their journey and we teach them how to uh, lose weight because whether or not you've had one uh, diet drink with Splenda in it or something with Splenda in it, as compared to needing to lose, I'm just going to say 100 pounds, we, the, the 100 pounds is more damaging to your body than just having a Splenda drink every once in a while or something like that, okay? So you just have to keep all that in mind. But if you've come into this program knowing I do not do artificial sweeteners, well, then you don't have to. It's totally fine. Just don't do that. And this is what I love. If you don't mind eating Hormel Turkey Spam, we can teach you how to do this program and lose weight. But if you are only willing to eat grass-fed, grass-finished beef, organic things that is non-genetically modified, then we'll teach you how to do this program. You see, we teach you how to do the program, but you determine the quality of the food and that you buy. And that is a blessing because this allows everybody to do it on every kind of budget. And I love that. So let's look at approved beverages. Obviously, we've got to get our water in. We need to do 64 ounces at a minimum of water, but your goal is a gallon. If you are getting that gallon of water in, then you are gonna feel much more satisfied and you're gonna be hydrated. A dehydrated body does not efficiently give up fat or waste, and both of those things need to be moving out of our body. We can also have zero calorie beverages of any type, but that does not, that does not count in your water count. You can have unsweet or approved tea, that does not count in your water count. And you can have coffee, but make sure you only use approved sweeteners. There is a link in the food library to all of the approved sweeteners. And um, we don't want you using more than 50 calories of that in, a, um, in, a, in your coffee. So 15 calories, because all that can add up. So just make sure you're using one that you think is best. Cheese, let's look at some cheese. You don't want to use more than 50 calories of cheese if that is your only condiment, but if you were using other things with your condiment, let's say you want to have a slice of cheese and you want to do some ketchup on something, then you want to make sure, let's say I use a 45 calorie slice of cheese, I can only use five calories of ketchup. So you want to keep that in mind when you're using that. But some cheeses that you could use are fat-free. Feta cheese, Kraft fat-free cheese, Borden fat-free cheese, Cabot extra light cheese, Laura Land fat-free cheese, Kroger brand fat-free cheese, Lifetime fat-free cheese. I'm gonna start right here. Travis likes this Lifetime fat-free cheese the best. I don't see it in any stores that I shop in. It, they basically, you can order it from their website. So they would just ship it to you. Now out of this list right here, this Borden fat-free cheese, I don't know what they do to this cheese, but it is good. It is really good for a fat-free cheese. I really enjoy the flavor of that. It's nice. And so I bought it at Kroger. I bought it at Ingalls. 
Then we've got Cabot Extra Light Cheese. I really like that cheese because it is a block cheese. I buy that at Ingalls and I bought it at Publix as well. It is 75% less fat than if it was just the regular Cabot cheese. But I go ahead and I cut it into 50 calorie blocks. That way when I'm making myself a fibrous carb salad, I can just take that little block and I can shred it right over there. And to me, it tastes better than a just a, a shredded fat-free cheese this cabot extra light cheese tastes better to me than that so that's why i do it that way then we're going to look right over here at this lean protein now milk you can do eight ounces up to 16 ounces but it needs to be an approved milk fat-free fair life milk and kroger carb master milk work those are easily found you can also do a hemp milk now, this fat-free fair life milk, you can buy that at most stores. And then the Kroger Carb Master milk is obviously just found at Kroger. The reason that these two are specifically mentioned that you can do is because they have enough protein in them. Just a fat-free milk or a skim milk, they may be low in fat, but they don't have the protein that you need. Typically, milk as is being had as like it goes in a cereal, a cereal is a little bit starchier. You need the protein in the milk in order to negate the starchiness of, uh, of a cereal or something like that if you're doing that. Also, the addition of these milks to something like the Grab the Gold Bar or the Buff Bait cookies can make you a meal replacement, can make you a meal replacement. The Kroger Carb Master Milk, and I believe they have the fat-free chocolate in the Fairlife, but this Kroger has a vanilla flavor and a chocolate flavor. That little chocolate one, if I just want a little something after my meal, just a little something, because it is considered a category one lean protein, I will drink maybe one ounce. Now, it doesn't sound like much, but a lot of times all we were wanting is a little taste in our mouth. I'll drink like one ounce of of the Kroger Card Master chocolate milk, and it just kind of sets off my meal, finishes it off. So let's have a look down here at our breadings and flours. You can use coconut flour, carb quick flour, Bob's TVP, which is a textured vegetable protein and almond flour to maybe lightly bread your chicken breast or lightly bread some okra or other things that you want to lightly bread. You can use all of those things. Also in the recipe library, there are recipes that you can make cornbread and biscuits and all kinds of things out of there. Now, let's say that you buy that Carb Quick. There are recipes on the Carb Quick box. You don't wanna use those recipes. They weren't taking Shibola's rules into account when they did those recipes. You want to use the recipes from the recipe library. So all you have to do is go into the recipe library, type in Carb Quick, and you'll notice Carb Quick is spelled with just a K at the end, not quick as in CK at the end, it's just got the K. Put that in and you will come up with all the recipes and I mentioned pancakes earlier, that's what I make my pancakes with, the Carb Quick flour. So let's have a look here at some cereals. You can do one up to one and a half cups. And there's a lot of cereals available in the program, but what we have for you tonight to learn about are the ones that are best for weight loss. There's other ones on the program and they work, but they're not necessarily the best for weight loss. So Kashi Go Lean Original, you could do that. And obviously you would choose one of those milks that we just went over. Kay's Natural Cereal, we sell that at the Shibboleth store. And I really, really, really like the French Vanilla. It is so good. And the High Low Nutritious Living. So those are the best cereals. There are other cereals on the program, but these are the best for weight loss. I'm not gonna reread this condiment list right here because we already went over all of that. But let's have a look at these restaurants. And if y'all have any questions at all, uh, please go ahead and type those in while I'm going over some of these restaurants. I am not gonna read every single restaurant on this list, but what I am gonna tell you is the biggest, most important tip. You need to go into the restaurant guide. You need to go to the link for the restaurants that you frequent the most and look at what is available. You've got to open up the um, link because it'll tell you exactly how to order it. Today, for the very first time, I ordered the Wendy's Chili. 
I've never ordered it before. So I'm sitting there in the line, had my app open and I said, okay, how do I order this? I ordered it specifically like it said to order it. The beautiful thing about this is that we've done all the work. Shibolik has done all the work. You just get to benefit from their work. So for example, I had somebody else help look up the tortilla soup at Chick-fil-A tonight. It said you could have the uh, tortilla soup, but it said don't, t don't eat the little tortilla strips. So there's very specific rules in there of how to order the food. Let's, let's have a look at just a few of these. We've got Chick-fil-A. I eat at Chick-fil-A a lot and have lost 50 pounds. I didn't even know I had 50 pounds to lose. My goal was to lose 35 and a half pounds. I dropped that in three months. I went into our maintenance program and in our maintenance program, I lost another 15 pounds. I said, thank you, Lord. So Chick-fil-A, you can have eight to 12 grilled chicken nuggets with a side salad. So see, I already know exactly what I'm gonna order at a fast food restaurant um, so that I don't get pressured to order something wrong or something that's not gonna, it's gonna ruin a perfect day. So I go into Chick-fil-A and I basically am willing to give up four nuggets to just eat the fried ones. So I go for these eight fried nuggets with a side salad. So I order, I would like uh, whatever the number is. I say, I want that number with a side salad instead of French fries, a light Italian dressing. And I don't use the whole thing. I just drizzle it on there. And then I say, I want a diet lemonade. Now keep in mind the diet lemonade at Chick-fil-A, a lot of diet drinks are zero calorie. Theirs is not. It's 50 calories. So when I do that, I have to consider that my extra. And remember, you can have one extra in a day if you needed it. It's best not to, but you could. So that is my one extra for the day when I do Chick-fil-A. And then at a Mexican restaurant, you can have a bowl of chicken soup, no rice. You could have three soft chicken tacos, but use your own tortilla. At McDonald's, you could have a quarter pounder on your own bread. At Wendy's, you can have a, a small chili over a side salad. I didn't have it over my side salad. I just ate them separately, but it was very tasty. Now, Burger King, a grilled chicken with side salad and so forth, okay? But the most important thing that you can need, need to remember is all meat at a restaurant needs to be considered a category four protein plus fat. That way, you know that you are not gonna order anything that is a category three energy carb, a category five fruit or a category six superfood with that. Basically, you're gonna be ordering a fibrous carb with it, a fibrous carb. So just consider all meat a category four. Because, and even if it's a category one and you would cook it at home and it would be a category one, you don't know what oil they cooked in it in at the restaurant. So you have to consider lean proteins a category four protein plus fat because they've cooked fat into it. Therefore, they turned it into a protein plus fat. And I hope that makes sense. I'm gonna look and see if we've got any questions. Okay, so somebody, I don't know who Galaxy Note 10 is, but Galaxy Note 10 is asking, are these visuals located on the website? If you were specifically talking about this little uh, website that I went over, I am about to list it in the new member fast track group. Are you in that group? Because if so, it will be listed there shortly. And Galaxy J7 is asking if the app shows the restaurant list. Yes. So one of the things that I do is I have the app on my phone, but I also just saved to the home screen my favorite things from our mobile friendly website. I saved my profile on there. I saved the food library, the recipe library, and the restaurant guide on there. And then I also have the app. So they're available to be seen either way. And then add the, if you don't have the app, you're gonna look for Shibboleth Journal app. It is only 99 cents. Um, there's only the four most important things on the apps. The apps are extremely expensive to maintain. And on that, we will have the, the journal. So you can easily, easily journal through the app. A lot of people love the app just for the journaling because it's easy to journal there. It will also have your food library, your recipe library, and your restaurant guide. It will also have a picture of the combination chart too. So that's on there. But that this is, you don't learn the program through the app. You would go to the website to access videos and all of your links where you can register for webinars and things like that. But yes, you can see your restaurant list on the app or the mobile friendly website.
let's see right here. I, access video. Uh, hello, Joy and Kristen, who were on the Facebook. And Lisa asks, how do you find out if other food brands are approved? The very first thing that you're going to do if you're wanting to know something is approved, you're going to look it up in the food library and try to put as small a list I mean, words as possible for the search so it can ho hopefully find it. If you don't see it in there, you are going to take a picture of the front of the item and you're going to take a picture of the nutrition label. You're going to post that in the Shibboleth Fixed It Facebook group. That is a group that Kim Shibboleth, that's not me, I'm Kim Danky. I don't go by Kim Shibboleth. Another Kim goes by Kim Shibboleth. But Kim Shibboleth monitors that group and if it's not something that we can use, she'll let you know. And if it is something that could be added to the food library, she'll let you know and she'll add it to the food library so that everybody else can use it. And hey, Bo, Bo joined on Facebook too. Well, we are wrapping up right now. If y'all don't have any other questions, we're gonna hop off. But I would love for you to focus in on the fast track this week. There is a video that came out this morning and there's one that's gonna come out Tuesday morning all the way through Saturday morning. It's a video of me showing you how to utilize the website and giving you a little assignment for the day. It's important to go ahead and do those assignments because it means that you are taking this seriously. You have to have a ready and willing and wanting heart to be able to do this program and do it successfully. There are people that say that they, they've got to lose weight. Well, guess what? We really need to say we want to lose weight and we have to have that ready and willing and wanting heart. And it is a little bit of work to learn the program, but it's only the information you're gonna need for the rest of your life. So you might as well just learn it all now. And it's not hard, it's not hard. But like, like Lisa said, like what Lisa said, what other foods are approved? See, this is what I would do, Lisa. I would go into my pantry and look the foods that are up in my pantry, I would look them up in the food library. If they're in the food library, great. I write with a Sharpie what those categories are on there and how to use it. If it's not in the food library, take a picture of the front of the item, the back of the item, which is the nutrition label, Put it in the food lab, I mean, put it in the Shibboleth Fixed It group and let Kim tell you. Then you'll know if that'll work or not. If that is something that won't work, you're just gonna know, okay, these tortillas that I was buying before don't work. Let me go into the food library and let me find a tortilla that does work. And then obviously there's different categories. I would only search personally for a category two tortilla because I don't want category threes if I don't have to have them. I save my category threes for things like lima beans uh, because there's so many good breads in the category two. Why would I do anything else but that? So, so you can do that. The other thing is watching those Facebook posts help you see what other foods people are doing too. Okay, so Galaxy J7, other than weight loss, talk about the rewards. Okay, so I'm not sure exactly what your question is, but I'm going to talk about what I think you're asking, okay? So obviously on this program, we can lose weight, but you can get off multiple prescription meds if you are on prescription meds. I have a cousin who started this program, and she desperately needed to uh, get some numbers corrected. All of her numbers that were low that should be high and all of her numbers that were, were high that should be low were all out of whack. She started this program at the end of January, okay? Into January, middle, middle of January, sorry about that, middle of January. At the 1st of February, her numbers had all corrected themselves. After about six weeks of doing this, all of her numbers had corrected themselves. Her cholesterol had gone from 230 to 170, and any number that was low that should have been high was now high. Any number that was high that should have been low is now low. So it helps you feel better medically. It helps you feel better mentally. There's a lot less mental fogginess, and you do sleep better. There's all kinds of rewards 
um, to this program and this it's so, so beneficial. You also do a lot of behavior modification in Shibboleth. That was one of the biggest blessings for me is behavior modification. Basically, I didn't ever have anybody in my life lay out the rules for me and just say, Kim, you really shouldn't eat more than three meals a day. And if you're really, really hungry, you could go to something called a freebie, an extra and a snack, but try not to do all of those because they slow you down in weight loss but you could if you needed to, to not come out of efficient fat burning. Nobody before had told me about efficient fat burning or MCT oil and the benefits of MCT oil. And if you need to know the benefits of MCT oil, it's because it burns up really, really fast and it has no propensity to be stored on the body as fat. Um, nobody told me those things. So basically, I just learned the rules and I apply them in 50 pounds in about five months, fell off of my body. And I started, uh, I went into maintenance in September and have been in maintenance since then, keeping off this weight. I went from 185.5 to 135.5 and I maintain in between 135 and 139. That's my comfort level of maintaining. If I go on a vacation where I've had five or six holidays in a row and I slip up there until 142 something like that I just put the pedal to the metal again and go right back to ones and twos and MCTs oh the other thing that's really really good that we didn't go over tonight meal replacements before Shibboleth I did not embrace a meal replacement embrace a meal replacement get yourself some oatmeal protein pies we have the cream flavor we have the apple flavored Hemp bars, oh my goodness, order some hemp bars. It's 12 inches of goodness. You, it's, it's, it's a European darker chocolate with hemp seeds in it. You can get it with dried fruit on top or you can get it with nuts on top. You cut it into thirds. So you're gonna cut it at four inches and at eight inches. A third of it is your meal, it's extremely satisfying. So embrace the world of meal replacements, approved ones of course, because this will make your life very, very easy, and they're actually pretty good for weight loss. So when you're looking in meal replacements in the food library, try to set that weight loss meter at negative two to negative three to find the best for you. And but meal replacements, embrace those. Oh goodness, the uh, Galaxy J7 wants to know what category are Girl Scout cookies? Do you know what? Anytime I'm journaling something like eating a cookie that's not approved, I call it a category three. Here's why. I know that those seem to be the worst for you. <laughs> so I just mark all those as a category three. But I'll tell you, if you buy the, uh, what's it called? The Power Crunch Bar, the mint chocolate Power Crunch Bar, it's like a Girl Scout Thin Mint. Also, if you buy the peanut buttery ones, there's some other peanut butter one that does that, but the Power Crunch Bar tastes like a Girl Scout Thin Mint. All right, I'm gonna hop off. I've enjoyed spending time with y'all tonight. Please let us know if you have any questions. Make sure to watch all of the Fast Track videos this week. I wanna see that y'all have earned that badge by the end of the week. After you've watched the Fast Track videos, your secondary source would be going to Travis's original daily doses okay I'm more how you're gonna do certain stuff he he gets into a lot of the why the why you need to do this program and it is a blessing you're welcome Letitia you are welcome you're welcome Galaxy J7 all right bye y'all oh if you've not liked the Shibboleth public page you can like that page I go live there every morning Monday through Friday it will always be before eight o'clock Typically, it's between, I start it between 7.30 and 7.40. It lasts for about 15 minutes. And it's just me trying to help us stay focused and stay um, motivated to do this because we are a community. And if we stay together doing this, it's going to be great. If you don't have anybody in your area doing this, get somebody on it with you so that you can have an accountability partner, okay? But like the Shibboleth public page so that you can see me every morning, Monday through Friday. If I have to be somewhere super early, I go on an hour earlier. So, bye y'all, have a great night.